Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our auriculift. This is actually auricular oculift, which is a protocol that uh, we came up with, uh, inspired by the original acupuncture facelift. So welcome, everyone. You may want to interrupt me anytime if you have questions, or you can uh, write your questions on the chat box so that we can see them now. So we will have two parts for tonight, and um, this is going to be recorded. So to be able to actually perform auriculift, as coined by Sir Albert Machete, <laughs> we need to be able to familiarize ourselves with the five elements principle, okay, in uh, traditional Chinese medicine because um, we will be dealing with clients and it is important that you would know what particular element the client is um, exhibiting at its fullest. No? So first, let's look at the wood. Wood is considered to be like a tree growing upward in the springtime. And wood people are confident Assertive, ambitious, competitive, logical, organized. They are thinkers and they love challenges. The related emotion is anger. So make sure that they don't <laughs> have this kind of, they don't exhibit this emotion when dealing with you. When the wood is imbalanced, uh, they are aggressive, arrogant, reckless, and excess anger. So the advice is you need to be able to balance and control their emotion by meditation, yoga, or tai chi exercise. Um, in auriculif, we just do not address the facial issues. We just don't try to improve the face by needling the, the ear, the ear points, which we shall share with you later. It is also about addressing the health issues of the patient. So if uh, you are lucky enough to have mastered this in just two sittings, then congratulations. Okay, so this is uh, um, a simplified uh, representation of a wood personality. In Chinese medicine, Wood is exemplified by the liver organ. So these are people who are type A. They like to be in control. They are overachievers, perfectionists, and planners. And they usually come to you complaining of headaches, high blood pressure, shoulder tension, and joints issues. So when they see you and they happen to have an imbalance, um, you need to be able to address these issues as well. Now let's go to the fire element. Fire is summer. So this is full speed growing and maturing. Personality is usually joyful, exciting, social, charismatic, creative, attention-seeking, loves beauty and art. So when they see you in the clinic, you would always find them having their uh, cell phone and they take a lot of selfies. Okay. They would actually document everything uh, with the procedure that you're going to do. So this uh, is full speed growing and maturing. The related emotion is joy. When the fire is imbalanced, they are too emotionally sensitive. Now, for those who have attended the diagnostics uh, webinar, you may have you may have uh, learned that uh, it's so easy for us to tell if someone is so sensitive sensitive just by looking at the tongue. Okay, so we look for the heart crack, and uh, most of the time the heart crack is too deep, or probably the tip of the heart is too uh, red with some spot red spots. No. So they are impulsive, aggressive, and de they can become depressed. So the advice that we should give them is that they should watch their diet 
keep away from excess hot or spicy food, no smoking, and they should limit their alcohol intake and they should balance their social life with alone time. Okay. Next, um, here is a simplified representation of the fire personality. They are very passionate in what they do. They are loving and generous, intuitive, and they have leadership skills. They're actually the heart of the part. The 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 yeah, they usually get the attention in the part in parties and they easily get bored. So do uh, make sure that uh, your instructions are easy to understand for your lectures. They are prone to insomnia. They also have high blood pressure, like um the the wood personality. Okay, they usually have panic attacks and they'll have issues with their blood circulation. Next, we go to the earth type. Personality, they're thoughtful, caring, practical. They love to cook or do gardening. They love music and art. They are very grounding and supportive. That's why they call the earth. And if you're looking for a loyal friend, uh, look, some, look for somebody who belongs, who exemplifies the earth element. But the related emotion is overthinking. So when the earth is imbalanced, so they'll have overthinking, they worry too much, they are stubborn, okay? And they're clingy and they love to please people, okay? The earth element is related to stomach, spleen, and sweet taste. So they should keep a good diet. And they have this unusual cravings for sweet and sugar. And we have a way to deal with that craving, okay? Uh, using acupuncture. Set up boundaries so you don't have to take care of everyone around you. So again, this is a uh, simplified uh, representation of the earth person. They are considered to be nurturers. They are compassionate. They're sensitive, kind, reliable. But they are prone to fatigue, digestive issues. They have cravings, as we mentioned earlier. And they could have water retention. Next, we have the metal person. Okay. Cool down, they become introspective and intellectual. So these people are usually intelligent. Uh, they're very spiritual. They have, they're objective. They keep their cool and they stay calm. They are fighters. No? And they are independent. Yeah, do you have a question? Okay. They love discipline and rules. The related emotion is grief. So when the metal is imbalanced, they are restrictive and harsh. So you can't blame them. They're very self-protective. They wouldn't open up to you. It's so hard to, they're, you know, they, they rarely open up. Okay. So if you have a patient, who has a metal personality and they start trusting you, they tell you everything, then that means you're a good clinician. They are not very sociable when they are imbalanced. The metal element is related to the lung and skin. Okay? And uh, they should always be wary of cold or flu, especially during the fall season. Strengthen their lungs with exercise and avoid any smoking. Okay. Then, um, so in summary, uh, metal people are dependable. They're independent. They, they always make a follow through. They're strong. And they come to you with some health issues like skin issues, prone to colds and flus. They have breathing difficulties and constipation. In Chinese medicine, the lungs and the large intestine are, or the lungs and the colon are interiorly, exteriorly related. Okay. And then lastly, we have the water person. Okay. They go with the flow. They're adaptable. They're introspective, modest. They're sensitive. They also love art and music, just like the earth. 
and philosophy. They love the company of good friends. Related emotion is fear. So when the water is in balance, they're very indecisive. They try to escape life and they overindulge. Okay. So advice, water element is related to kidney and bladder. Watch the health of the urinary tract and reproductive system. Balance your social life with alone time. Avoid being isolated or overindulgent. And you surround yourself with nutritive liquids such as chicken soup or they should live near the water. Okay. So if some of you can relate, you know what to do. So in uh, summary, water people are, have, are strong-willed, they're very creative, they have sense of family, receptive, and they're reflective. And they come to you with health issues like edema, they have dark eye circles, okay? Low back ache, drained by, and they are drained by people. So for those with dark eye circles, um, we have a solution for that. So you not just need to treat your kidneys. So in Chinese medicine, we have such thing as Chinese face mapping. So as you can see on uh, from the slides, okay, number one is supposed to be the small intestine. Okay, this whole thing. Um, what do we look for here? We look for pigmentations. We look for lines. We look for discolorations, no? So if you have those issues, then probably you need to take care of the small intestine. The small intestine is interiorly, exteriorly related to the heart. And in Chinese medicine, the small intestine is we um, separate the pure from impure. If you attend our um, lectures on the basics, traditional Chinese medicine basics, then you will understand how important is the small intestine. So number two is bladder. So if you see the issues or discoloration somewhere here, then you might want to look at the bladder. At the same time, we compare it with what we see in the kidneys because number five is kidneys. If you remember the kidneys and the bladder, they are the water element. So as you can see, it's like continuous here. No. This is bladder number two, number five is kidneys. While the small intestine is um, partnering number three, the heart. This is the heart. So if you see um, redness here or some uh, issues here, no, some would have red uh, or rashes on this part uh, above the above the brow, no. Okay, so above the eyelashes, sorry, Ab the brow rather, I'm sorry, the, above the eyebrow. So you would always compare it with this one and that one. And almost always, if you see issues here, you can also have some issues here. Okay, and um, I like this because in Chinese medicine, if you do it properly in acupuncture, then you will be able to get rid of those, um, those lines there. <laughs> or even the discolorations, okay? The number four is liver. Liver is at the, here, this area, central, and this can even reach to uh, up to the, the, the bridge of the nose. The liver is um, partnered by the gallbladder. So if you remember, the gallbladder and the liver uh, comprise the wood element. So then number six is the stomach. Stomach and spleen would represent our um, earth element. So number five is kidney. So for those who have block areas here. So uh, I've seen patients who have, um, uh, would the, the blockness would extend up to this part, up to number six. That means uh, the stomach is already involved. Okay, and then I, okay, S lungs and large intestine are, they're interiorly, exteriorly related. If you remember, they belong to the metal element, 
Okay, so the sub number seven is large intestine, number eight is lungs. Okay, number nine is reproductive system. This is under the control of the kidneys. Okay, so if uh, you see issues here, okay, then uh, you may have issues with your reproductive system. So I hope that helped. Okay, for those who um, are registered with our course, you may be able to find um, in our in our notes, you no, know, the ebooks that we that come with the registration. Now let's go to the pulse positions according to the five elements. Okay, so again the five elements are fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. You no, know? so this is the left. The pulse, left pulses. So we call them the Chun Quan Shi. So the Chun is uh, heart and small intestine. Okay, as well as this one, the pericardium and the sun jiao. And then the liver, gallbladder, wood element. And then the kidney and the bladder, the water element. So on the right wrist, would be the spleen and the stomach in the middle, the quan, and the lung and the large intestine, the chun, would be the lung, uh, the, the the metal element. Okay. Uh, if we meet on uh, next week, you no, know, for those who enroll with us, <laughs> we're going to show you how to actually feel the pulse of your patients. And uh, you might want to subscribe to Acupuncture Matters if you want to really learn how to check the pulses using traditional Chinese medicine. So here is another face organ map. As a guide, you have to go over each zone of the face and uh, look for any changes in color from your normal skin tone, okay? So uh, you look for deep lines. So deep lines that are not part of the normal aging process. I have seen patients who have very deep lines, yet they are not that old yet. Okay. You look for congestion. What are signs of congestion? Pimples, blackheads, milia, whiteheads, or puffiness. Okay. So... This is actually a guide to the key areas of the face and their associated organs. But I prefer the first one. No, this is a little bit complicated. Um, but for your, for those who want to be serious about face reading, face mapping, then you need to study this uh, this one. But again, we go to the uh, in detail. Let's start with the forehead. In descending order, down the forehead. Remember the bladder earlier? So we have the bladder, the large intestine, the small intestine. Okay. Usually, if you see um, lines across the forehead, this reflects an imbalance. Okay. And um, if you see congestion or acne in this area, okay, this represents digestive congestion and poor detoxification. And uh, if the skin is red and dry or flaky, this indicates that um, you lack fluids in your digestive tract. Okay, that's large intestine, small bladder, uh, large and small intestine. Okay, uh, congestion or acne in this area would represent digestive congestion and poor detoxification. So make sure when this patient comes to you just because they want to look good, um, you need to be able to address this and they will become your friends forever. <laughs> this is so easy. This is um, just need to do something about the digestive system. You have to um, take a look at their earth element, no? dampness, uh, heat. Okay. So... Um, Let's go to the next one. If you have a red um, and dry or flaky skin, uh, this is obviously an indication of uh, lack of fluids in the digestive tract. 
Okay. So let's deal do with the treatment. So before you do the actual um, lifting, okay, if you saw those um, issues, then you need to be able to do something. So you would be needling bladder 23. Bladder 23 is the back shoe point of the kidney or the back transporting point of the kidney. It's, you can see it's located 1.5 soon lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of uh, the second lumbar vertebra. And bladder 23 is actually the main point to tonify the kidneys. This is one of the principal points to strengthen the kidneys, to fortify the yang, to nourish the yin and benefit the jing. So on this, uh, on in the ear, you can look for um, bladder 23. So you need to, you use a probe, um, look for tenderness, okay? So if this is uh, bladder 10, as you can see, it uh, is um, parallel to the cruise of the helix. Bladder 30 is parallel to the bifurcation of the of the superior and inferior uh, anti uh, superior, superior and inferior root of the anti helix. Okay, so if this is thirty and this is ten, so twenty must be in between, and so it's here twenty three, and you'll be surprised even the the back pain uh, disappears. Okay, questions. Okay. So, as we mentioned earlier, it is the main point to tonify the kidneys, okay? And uh, bladder 23 is actually a principal point to strengthen the kidneys, you know, to fortify the yang. Because uh, there are people who have yang deficiency, they feel cold, even their legs feel cold um, when you palpate the legs, no? We nourish the yin. So bladder 23 nourishes the yin. That means um, you uh, will be able to address the lines, the dryness, and benefits the jing. So who knows? You can even uh, make the patient uh, improve his uh, reproductive um, ability. Okay, So it tonifies the mind, stimulates initiative, it lifts depression, and strengthens the willpower. So can um, you just imagine if the patient comes to you um, with a depression gun, no? Okay. Another point is bladder 40. This is a favorite point. I always uh, needle this when you have uh, uh, low back pain, okay? So this is called bladder 40. This is located at the back of the knee, as you can see here on the popliteal crease in a depression midway between the tendons. So what are these muscles? The biceps femoris and the semitendinosus. Okay. Now, to locate this point, you have to um, slightly flex the knee. Okay. This is considered to be one of the most important acupuncture points. So bladder 40 on the ear is actually here, okay? There. And um, it is an essential point for lumbar pain. This is one of the best points for controlling blood, okay? It is also good for every general kind of skin disorder. So remember this. So bladder 40 is actually the hussy point of the bladder. So it's very good for skin issues, okay? So as I mentioned earlier, it's considered to be one of the most important acupuncture points. So bladder 23, bladder 40, okay. Another point is, uh, which is quite popular is LI4, Hoku, Hoku, on the dorsum of the hand. And uh, it is between the first the first and second metacarpal bones at the midpoint of the second metacarpal bone. This is the second metacarpal bone, and it is close to the radial border. 
you can ask the patient to squeeze the thumb against the index finger and then locate the point at the highest point of the bulge of the muscle and approximately level with the end of the crease. Okay. So you have two places in incident position, the transverse crease of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb with the margin of the web between the thumb and the index finger of the other hand. So we will show you how to needle this. But again, you, you might want to try needling this on the ear. So where is LI4 here? Easy. So LI4 is somewhere here. It's actually at the tip of the, what they call this? This is the anti-tragus, right? Here, this area. Okay. It's a very good uh, detoxifying point. Well, another favorite is LI11. I use this to actually get rid of the internal heat, especially if it's chronic, no? So LI11, um, if you locate this on the, on the elbow, uh, you flex the elbow first. So the point is in the depression at the lateral end of the transverse ah. cubic crease, midway between lung five and the lateral epicondyl of the humerus. LI11 is the best point for chronic constipation. So if you, um, this is LI11 on the ear, at the back of the ear. Okay. It's so easy to locate this because uh, as long as you have the probe. Okay. Next, oh, another favorite point is SI11. Okay, small intestine 11 is located on the scapula in the depression at the center of the subscapular fossa at the level of the four thoracic uh, vertebra. Okay, when you stimulate this point, it will help to release toxins. Okay, and the patient will feel better. So SI11 is somewhere here. See that? So this is between 9 and 17. So um, so 13 would be here. So 11 would be here. Okay? Easy. Next, we look at the area between the eyes. This is called the liver zone. Okay? Uh, if you see a red patch between the eyes, no, this indicates poor liver detoxification and heavy metal toxicity, particularly mercury, okay? And uh, if you see vertical lines in this zone, like this one, number 11, this will indicate liver imbalance, okay? So here is a red patch between the eyes. So as you mentioned earlier, it is indicative of poor liver detoxification and heavy metal toxicity, particularly mercury. So vertical lines in this zone indicate liver imbalance. Okay. This one, um, this is what will make you famous to remove the lines within three sessions. Some, I, in fact, uh, some of the therapists um, were able to really get rid of the lines in one or two sessions only. Okay. This is what we call 11s, and we will show you how to get rid of this later, okay? So, next is liver 13. This is liver 13. You do this thing. To locate the free end of the 11th rib, you place the entire hand or the arm on the upper abdomen and with gentle finger pressure, palpate downwards along the costal margin until the end of the 11th rib is located just above the level of the umbilicus. This point is good to use if the mind is stuck to initiate change or turn a chapter. So if uh, your career is not moving forward, this must be the career that you're looking for because everybody wants to look good. <laughs> this is a major point for liver chi invading the spleen. So this is a liver spleen disharmony. Did you know that if you have liver chi stagnation, a lot of things can happen? Okay, so in the case of liver uh, chi invading the spleen, you could have uh, diarrhea. Okay, gallbladder 20 or the wing pool, wind pool. 
This is located in the depression between the upper portion of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the trapezius, on the same level as um, governing vessel 16 or do 16. GB20 is the single most important point for headaches and dizziness, no matter the etiology or channels involved. And this is one of the, the, the major points for wind. Okay. So on the ear, where is the GB20? So it is somewhere here. So if this is, um, yeah, somewhere here. Okay, next we go to the area under the eyes. This is called the kidney zone. So this is located... Uh... Okay, it is located on the top of the eye. Yeah, actually it includes the top of the eye, but it's most um, usually the under, uh, below the eyes, no? So if you see puffiness and fluid retention in this area, it is a sign that the body is holding on to too much fluid. No? So watery and swollen with a blue tinge. Or is mucus congested? So if it's mucus congested, you will see um, this is a little bit fatty and swollen with a yellow tinge. Okay. So here is an example of um, puffiness and fluid retention. <clears throat> So that means the body is holding on to too much fluid. As you can see, it uh, is watery and swollen with a blue tinge. No? Diba? Bluish. Or there can be mucus congestion. So with mucus congestion, it will become fatty and swollen with a yellow tinge. So salt intake should be monitored. As should excessive sugary drinks like fruit juice and soft drink. To reduce mucus congestion, you have to uh, reduce fat and dairy consumption. Blue circles or white under the eyes will indicate tiredness or even exhaustion. I think this is a very common, uh, very commonly seen in clinics. No? A yellow tinge will show the liver and gallbladder are working too hard. So dry, flaky, or red skin in the creases above the eye will show liver stress. So here you could see uh, blue circles or white under the eyes. Um, this indicates tiredness or even exhaustion. A yellow tinge shows the liver and gallbladder are working too hard. Okay, too much stress. Now, uh, dry, flaky, or red skin in the creases above the eyes. This means liver stress. Liver stress. No? Okay, points for getting rid of those issues. Number one is kidney seven, okay? This is located on the medial aspect of the leg, of the lower leg, in the depression, tooth soon, superior to kidney three. This is kidney three, on the anterior border of the Achilles tendon. This point is one of the foremost points to strengthen the kidney function of dominating body fluids, regulating urination and controlling sweating, okay? So if you sweat a lot, you might want to needle this. The other patients, they, they sweat a lot. So kidney seven is a point of choice. And uh, we were not going to use the, the body, we're going to use kidney seven here. So this one would tell us that uh, you need to uh, needle underneath this uh, helix, no? underneath, okay? It benefits the kidneys. It tonifies the kidney, chi, yin, and yang. So it's very, very effective. It regulates water passages and it treats edema, okay? And your patient will really like you for that. Next is stomach 40. This is a favorite. Because I have seen a lot of patients with uh, phlegm, okay? Um, stomach 40 is uh, called the abundant bulge or feng lung. It is located eight soon superior to the tip of the external malleolus. 
It is lateral to uh, stomach 38. So stomach 38 is here. About two finger breadths lateral to the anterior border of the tibia. And stomach 40 is the most important point to resolve phlegm in all its manifestations and in all areas of the body. And it can eliminate uh, visible and invisible phlegm. So on the ear, you can locate stomach 40 here. So it's like uh, your basis would be the cruise of the helix. You go up. Actually, this is also a favorite point, stomach 41. It's uh, very good for strengthening the stomach, no? stomach 41. Um, so this is like um, 2 o'clock. That's stomach 40. Okay. So note for tenderness. Okay. Now let's go to the nose. The nose tip. Other books would tell us it corresponds to the spleen. And this book will, this reference will tell us it corresponds to the lungs. But take note, the lungs and the spleen, they work together. They have the same polarity. They're called the, the tie-in, okay? The, um, they belong to the tie-in channel. That means greater yin, okay? Um, the bridge would ref reflect the health of the stomach or the liver, okay? So congestion in the form of uh, blockheads will represent the uh, poor stomach function, uh, stomach digestion, and low hydrochloric acid levels. So if you have low hydrochloric acid levels, you won't be able to rot your food. So you'll have stomach issues, okay? If the nose is uh, red or with broken capillaries, so this indicates uh, excessive excessive intake of eat, heating liquids, including alcohol, coffee, and tea. Too much tea. Okay, so take a look at your nose. If it looks like this, probably you have to quit drinking um, alcohol, coffee, or tea. Okay, so what are we going to use to be able to address these issues? First, we need to use uh, Stomach 36. Stomach 36 is called leg three miles. That means uh, if you feel tired when you uh, press this point, you can walk another three miles. So this is located, as you can see here, below the knee, three tsun, inferior to stomach 35. This is stomach 35. So three tsun, one finger breadth lateral to the anterior crest of the tibia. This is the single most important point in the body to stimulate the areas of stomach and spleen to generate chi and blood. Okay, if you do daily moxa on this point, moxibastion, this will preserve and maintain health and extend life. So you may want to do this twice a week or even three times a week. And uh, needling this uh, point will have a direct effect on the stomach. So when you tonify this point or reinforce uh, stomach 36, this will stimulate gastric motility and secretion of gastric acid. So you bring back the appetite, you stimulate the appetite and improve digestion. So on the ear, it is located here. Stomach 36. Stomach 36 and this is stomach 40. Next, we go to spleen 6. Spleen 6 is um, at the posterior margin of the tibia, three tone directly above the medial malleolus of the ankle. It is a primary point in the treatment of uh, digestive, gynecological, sexual, urinary, and emotional disorders. Okay. Now let's go to the cheeks, the pisngi. Pisngi ba? In Tagalog. They represent the respiratory and circulatory systems. Okay. So if you see pimples or congestion in this area, these are the result of a high fat and mucus forming diet, like simple sugar, dairy, and processed foods. Okay. Here. So, those who have this kind of um, face, you have pimples or congestion. This means uh, that means this person is fond of uh, food high in fat and mucus forming diet, no? 
like simple sugars, you know, milk tea, <laughs> anything with, with sugar, soft drinks. Okay. So pale cheeks may be a low uh, may be a sign of low iron levels. Okay. Whereas if you have this kind of cheeks, overly flushed cheeks, they show poor circulation and the consumption of uh, hot foods like alcohol, coffee, and spices and poor elimination. Okay. A greenish tinge, greenish, indicates liver congestion. So points to use, we have lung seven. It's called the uh, uh, broken sequence, proximal to the styloid process of the radius in a small hollow um, 1.5 soon above the transverse crease of the wrist. Okay, so this point opens the lungs, stimulates the descending and dispersing of lung chi. So on the ear, it is located here, lung seven. Okay. Heart seven is shanman or spirit gate. Okay. So in uh, ear acupuncture, we have uh, shanman here, but for heart seven, it should be here. Okay. So on the body, it's on the radial side of the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris on the transverse crease of the wrist. It is located in the depression in the articular region between the pisiform bone and the ulna. It calms the spirit, regulates and tonifies the heart, pacifies the heart, nourishes heart blood. Okay, kidney one. Okay, kidney one or Yongchuan, gushing spring, is located on the sole of the foot in the depression when the foot is in plantar flexion, approximately at the junction of the anterior third and the posterior two-thirds of the line connecting the base of the second and third toes and the heel. It tonifies the kidneys, the kidney yin, and the kidney ching. Okay? Okay, now let's go to the mouth. The mouth represents the digestive function. If you have white or very pale lips, this indicate uh, low iron levels and poor circulation. Dry flaky skin or wrinkles can indicate dehydration. Cracks or sores in the corners of the mouth are signs of uh, low B vitamin or iron levels. Red, hot, or bleeding gums are a sign of uh, hot or over-acidic stomach. I used to have this before when I was younger. <laughs> and so animal fats, simple sugars, and heating food and drink need, uh, needs to be avoid avoided. Okay? So what are we going to use to be able to address those issues? You use CV12 or REN12. This is called Chong1. Middle cavity. It's located on the anterior midline, four tsun above the umbilicus. It clears stomach fire and heat, and it is so effective. In the ear, it's uh, here. This is CV12. Yeah? REN12. Stomach 25. It's called Tian, Tian Shu, or Heaven's Pivot. It is located on the abdomen to tsun lateral to the umbilicus. Okay. Note the two tsun line on the abdomen is located halfway between the umbilicus and the palpable lateral border of your muscle called the rectus abdominis. Okay. So it has many, many functions, regulates and uh, facilitates the functioning of the intestines, regulates the spleen, qi and yang, regulates the stomach, qi and yin, resolves dampness and heat, damp heat, regulates qi and blood, eliminates stagnation, clears heat, eliminates food stagnation, regulates the middle and lower jowls, moistens the intestines and generates fluids. Now let's go to the chin. The chin corresponds to the kidneys and digestive system. Once again, if you see congestion in this area, this is a sign um, of a diet very high in processed foods, 
sugars, and fats. It can indicate uh, unbalanced kidney function, which is the result of uh, pushing the body by working too hard, stress, or going beyond normal physical endurance. Okay, congestion in this area can be, um, okay, so you can see here, this is a sign of unbalanced kidney function. You work too hard or you have stress or going beyond normal physical endurance. So how do we treat these issues? We use kidney three, Tai Chi, which is called the Supreme Stream here. It is uh, in the depression between the tip of the medial malleolus and the Achilles tendon. This is the most important point for treating yin deficiency. This is an extremely important point to use to tonify any deficiency of the kidneys. And this point affects the pancreas. So it's very good for preventing kidney failure amongst diabetics. No? So this is where your kidney three is located on the ear. It's not actually located on the ear. It's already on the, the face, no? Stomach 36, we have discussed this earlier. So it's uh, located also here. Now let's go to the jaw and under the jaw line. This is often a hormonal influence, particularly it worsens in accordance with the monthly cycles. Okay. So cysts rather than pimples, they indicate lymphatic toxicity, which may result from medications, environmental toxins, or a highly processed and sugar-rich diet. So points to use to resolve this issue. We have liver three, tai chung, or great rushing. It's located on the foot, 1.5 to 2 tsun above the web here. This is uh, the web of the, yeah. And this is where the liver three is located between the first and second toes. It affects your parathyroid, your pancreas, and the ovaries. This point cleans the liver. It is good for detoxing from alcohol, drugs, and chocolate. Spleen 6, or San Yin Jiao, 3 Yin Intersection. Okay, it is at uh, the posterior margin of the tibia, 3 tuned directly above the medial malleolus of the ankle. It harmonizes the liver, regulates menstruation, regulates uterus, and stimulates the adrenal pituitary ovaries. Okay, then we look at the tongue. So, this is best uh, learned when we do it, uh, when we do the practicum face to face on, um, on the 23rd. No? So, we hope to see you there. Or you might want to take a look at the books that we have. Okay, tomorrow I'll uh, probably show picture. Oh, yeah, we have it here now. Okay, so this is a normal tongue. This is a tongue with chi deficiency. That means, uh, so we had a very uh, comprehensive discussion of the tongue uh, last time, last Tuesday. This is heat damp retention, blood stasis, you can see it looks purple, blood deficiency, the tongue looks pale and dry and thin, uh, yin deficiency, okay, you can see the cracks here, no coating, if it's yin deficiency, there is no coating, yang deficiency, the tongue looks pale and a little bit wet, no? damp heat, and this is chi stagnation. Okay, so the tongue has many connections in the body, okay, both to the meridians and the internal organs. So it is very useful to inspect the tongue to confirm the diagnosis and provide a visual indication of a person's internal condition. I would rather go to someone who looks at the tongue than someone who doesn't look at the tongue. <laughs> so you have no right to practice. I'm sorry to say this, but... Uh, you are more credible if you know how to look at the tongue, okay? So at Lump, we give you a very good uh, discussion of the tongue, okay? Both um, web during webinars and uh, practicum.
Okay. So the patient would appreciate it if you look at his style. So it is a very useful uh, uh, tool to inspect the tongue, to confirm diagnosis, and provide a visual indication of a person's internal condition. And the practice of tongue diagnosis has been used for thousands of years already within the TCM and Ayurvedic systems. The condition of the tongue was considered an important indicator of health and disease in ancient Greece, and this knowledge was used by Western physicians who, until very recently, routinely inspected the tongue and made observations using Western terminology. Inspection of the tongue encompasses details of the coating, the color, the texture, and symmetry of the body of the tongue, which can be seen in the illustration. Okay. So let's look at yin deficiency. Uh, if the tongue is diagnosed as yin deficiency, there is no coating. Hmm? Do you see any coating here? No coating. Yin deficiency, absence of coating. The patient would um, complain of hot flashes, sweat at night, insomnia. Okay, this is a type of insomnia where you get to wake up every hour or every two hours. Sometimes you don't get to sleep much because you keep going back to the to pee. You keep going. You you know you 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 would want to pee all the time, or you keep waking up, irritable. There is ringing in the ears, or menopause. Okay. Now, if you have Yang deficiency, this is how the tongue would look like. It looks a little bit. It it is really pale, and it looks moist. It looks um yeah, wet. No. And sometimes you see a thick white coating there. Okay, pale swollen tongue. This patient would feel cold easily. They have a pale complexion. They complain of back pain, tendency to panic, emotionally low, and sometimes they have impotence, infertility. Next is the blood deficiency tongue. Okay. As you can see, it is pale and dry and thin. No? Okay. The patient would complain of dizziness, fatigue, palpitations, poor concentration and memory, and insomnia. Okay, chi deficiency is easy. All you have to do is look for the teeth marks and at the same time ask questions like, do they feel like, um, do they feel tired all the time? They have fatigue, poor appetite, spontaneous sweating, shortness of breath, overthinking, and worrying. Okay? Now, this is the tongue uh with blood stasis or blood stagnation. So what happens when you have blood stagnation? The limbs are cold. Sometimes you see varicose veins, painful legs, headaches, chest pain, liver spots, and lack of skin luster. Okay, this is the tongue of someone with cheese stagnation. Actually, you don't see so much when... Uh, on uh, in patients with uh, chi stagnation, but this is the type of chi stagnation that that's a little bit advanced. Okay, that means it's been there for quite some time. So, patient is stressed, tendency to be depressed and upset, and uh, sometimes with unstable emotional state. So this is the tongue with heat signs. Okay, yellow coating, thin yellow coating, red tongue. So this patient obviously would feel hot, sweat easily, thirsty, constipated, irritable, and bad-tempered with skin problems. Okay. Damp heat. So dampness and heat. So there will be skin problems, urinary infections, clammy skin. So when you shake their hands, it's a little bit moist. Yeah, clammy, no? And the patient is angry and uncomfortable. Okay, And then dump retention, the patient would feel bloated, fullness in the chest and abdomen, they feel heavy and lethargic. So dampness, usually we look at the coating. So uh, as you can see here, the coating is a little bit thick, white, greasy, you know, swollen tongue. So it is important to know these things because 80% of your patients would be uh, would have a, the so-called subhealthy state, 
uh, fifteen percent are actually not healthy, and five only five percent are healthy. So if you do auriculif, it would uh, mean a lot for the patient if uh, they just don't look beautiful, but they also would feel better. Okay, so that the effect would be would last long. So this is the end of part one. Thank you very much for your attention. Do we have any questions? Questions? <laughs> okay. Do you want to take a break or shall we proceed to the next one? <laughs>